flowers of the fairest bring flowers of the rarest from garden and woodland and hillside and vale our full hearts are swelling our glad voices telling the praise of the loveliest rose of the vale Oh Mary we crown thee with blossoms today Queen of the angels Queen of the May Oh Mary we crown thee with blossoms today Queen of the angels Queen of the May Our voices ascending in harmony blending Oh, thus may our hearts turn Dear Mother to Thee Oh, thus shall we prove Thee How truly we love Thee How dark without Mary Life's journey would be Oh, Mary, we crown Thee With blossoms today Queen of the angels Queen of the May, oh Mary, we crown thee with blossoms today. Queen of the angels, Queen of the May. Homage we render Thy love and protection Sweet mother to win In danger defend us In sorrow befriend us And shield our hearts From contagion and sin When life with temptation is darkly replete Forsake us, or oh, never, our hearts be thine ever As pure as the lilies we lay at thy feet Oh Mary, we crown thee with blossoms today Queen of the angels, Queen of the men Oh Mary, we crown thee with blossoms today, Queen of the angels, Queen of the Hello everyone, and welcome to this historic little church of St. Maida, which dates back to the Middle Ages. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and we remember the following intentions. We remember Trixie Noty, whose month's mind is today, also the first anniversary of David Curran, and we have anniversaries for Mary, Taff, and deceased members of the Muir family of Rosie Group, the anniversary of Paddy Campbell and deceased family members, the anniversary of Priscilla Clark, the anniversary of Thomas and Josephine Myers and their son Patsy and their daughter Essie, and the anniversary of Jerry Brennan. All for whom this Mass is being offered. 
And as we prepare ourselves today to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we are mindful of the faith that has been handed down to us, our faith in Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Our Redeemer who came into the world to save each one of us. So we come to him as we come to a loving Father, a loving God, a loving Son. We come to him to ask his forgiveness for our failings. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the twelve called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out, our, out food. You brothers must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with the Spirit and with wisdom. We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the Word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicolaus of Antioch, a convert a convert to Jerusalem, to a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased and a large group of priests made their submission to the faith. The word of the Lord. Response to the psalm, Alleluia. Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp, with a ten-stringed lute sing him songs. For the word of the Lord is faithful in all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right and fills the earth with his love. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Hallelujah. Second reading is from the first letter of St. Peter. The Lord is a living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him, so that you too, the holy priesthood, that offers the spiritual sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God, 
may be living stones making a spiritual house. As scripture says, See how I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone that I have chosen, and the man who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are believers, it is precious. For the unbelievers, the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was the fate in store for them. But you are the chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God who calls you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. And the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father, and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me. To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. We are drawing near to the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection 40 days after Easter, and just two weeks from now. The readings from this Sunday are already preparing us for the time of Jesus' ascension, when the Lord will visibly leave his disciples. Jesus says to his followers, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. Furthermore, the Lord makes that wonderful promise. I am going to prepare a place for you, and I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. These mysterious words are a tremendous consolation for those who desire to belong fully to the Lord and God's kingdom, now and in heaven for all eternity. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear of tension and division within the Christian community. Ideals are very important and never to be let go of, yet we must live in the reality that all of us are frail and can fall victim to the blindness, prejudice and pettiness when it comes to living and working with others 
even with the best of intentions. We require a strong commitment of loving acceptance of those who think and act differently from us. This takes prayer and guidance to live graciously for the good of others, no matter who they are or what we may think of them. The first letter of St. Peter concerns itself with the fact that the life of a Christian is a lifelong process by which we draw near to Christ and in so doing draw closer to one another as well. As followers of Christ, it is charity or love of God and neighbour that transforms individuals through the power of the risen Christ into one family of God's people. To the extent that we live in love with one another, we are growing towards Christ. As followers of Christ, we share in his mission that all the world might know the message of salvation and God's infinite love for the human race. God so loved the world, we are told in Scripture, that Christ was sent by God to redeem all who were lost. The lives of each of us and of, of all believers are meant to open the eyes of our fellow men and women, bringing them to the same fountain from which we draw life and never tire of doing so. Christ's mission was to reveal God, with whom Jesus is one. Those who follow Christ are commissioned to continue the work of Christ, making the message of salvation in Jesus Christ known to the nations. There is no reason for distress at the prospect of physical separation from the Lord, for the followers are in fact never really separated from Christ who promised to send us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to those who are willing to give all in order to have the one thing necessary, a share in God's life forever. The followers of Christ must keep their faith both in the Father who sent Jesus Christ into the world and in Jesus himself sent by the Father for the salvation of the human race. Jesus return to the Father side should not cause frustration but engender hope in our eventual reunion with God. There are many dwelling places where God lives, Jesus tells his disciples, and everyone can find a place there. As Christ's messengers to the nations, we are endowed with God's help or power to fulfill our vocation. This power comes as the many gifts of the Holy Spirit poured out initially at Pentecost and upon his followers at the time of their baptism and consummation and subsequently in the reception of the sacraments, especially reconciliation and communion. Christ promised to remain with his disciples even until the end of time and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, will guide you all into the truth. The early followers of Christ were so convinced of these truths that they regularly proclaimed in their sacred liturgy or worship the phrase in Aramaic, Maranatha, that is, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Lord, we may, may we share in that conviction. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we bring our prayers of intercession to the Lord. As so many of us face into an unknown world, let us raise our minds and hearts in prayer to God, the giver and the lover of life. In today's Gospel, Jesus tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Let us pray that we too can come through him to the Father. Lord, hear us. In this month of May, we ask Mary, our mother, to pray for us to God that this great suffering may end and that the families of the sick and the victims be comforted and supported by the love of friends and neighbours. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those at home who cannot be present with us in this church today and who are missing being in the Divine Presence. We pray that they will soon be able to receive Jesus Christ in his most holy Eucharist. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those children preparing for First Communion and Confirmation who have had their day of union with Jesus and the Holy Spirit postponed due to the coronavirus restrictions. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick and the elderly who at this time may be in hospital or housebound, isolated and unable to see or be with their loved ones. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who have lost loved ones during this time of crisis and who have been unable to be with them, grieve for them, and be comforted by friends and community. Lord, hear us. For all whose pilgrimage on earth is over, especially, we remember today, Trixie Nulty, whose month's mind is today, David Curran, his first anniversary is today, and the anniversaries for Mary Taff and deceased members of the Moore family, Paddy Campbell and deceased family members, Priscilla Clark, Thomas and Josephine Myers and their son Patsy and their daughter Essie, and Jerry Brennan. We pray that they may reach their final destination at the Father's house. Lord, hear us. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them, and may they rest in peace. And may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. God, our Creator, we praise you for your mighty deeds. Hear the prayers your faithful people make through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. The Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to lie to you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Eamon and Michael, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Trixie Nulty, whose month's mind is today, David Curran, whose first anniversary is today, and we also remember the anniversaries of Mary Taff, and deceased members of the Moore family of Rosybrook, the anniversary of Paddy Campbell and deceased family members, anniversary of Priscilla Clark, anniversary of Thomas and Josephine Myers and their son Patsy and their daughter Essie, and the anniversary of Jerry Brennan, whom you 
have called from this world to yourself, grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And remember especially all those who have died from the COVID-19. And all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. And at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. And now if we will say for those who have not been able to receive today the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you are already there, I embrace you and unite myself to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. And we say our prayer to our Heavenly Mother. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your clemency hear and answer us. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And I just mentioned once again, this is the month of May, and May, of course, the month traditionally devoted to Our Lady. I did remind you in the bulletin to please try and pray the rosary to Our Lady, a very powerful prayer. And Our Lady, as you know, is our Heavenly Mother. She intercedes for us always to keep us on the path that leads to her Son, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks.